I'm Tyler from Reversion Raceworks and we're working on the Suburban again. In this video we're going to be going over how we prep our factory wire harness to be ready for the Terminator X Max install, cleaning the engine bay, degreasing all that nasty oil that was in there, and installing new properly incised fuel injectors. So stay tuned, we have a lot of work ahead of us, I can't wait to show you how it goes. Now I'm trying to get the entire wire harness out of this truck. So I got the fuse block loose, which was just three 10 millimeter bolts that go through the inner fender up into here. And then I got the plug out for the main harness that goes through the firewall. That was a T25. But at this phase, I'm just gonna keep tugging on things, seeing what's stuck and see what it takes to get this thing loose. All right, so a bit more tear down. There is no more engine harness or transmission harness in the truck right now. Everything is gone from in here and I definitely have a bit of cleaning to do. We also have the fuel rail gone. Uh, that wasn't too bad to take out. Just a lot of hidden fasteners that were kind of hard to find. And uh, the tear down continues. Up next, we have new fuel injectors to put into this factory fuel rail. We're also going to be replacing all the wiring with the Terminator X Max wiring. Since obviously the Holly is going to be controlling the fuel injectors now, there's really no need for any of this wiring. But we are using the existing clips and we also have a new fuel pressure regulator because this is a common fail point on these trucks. So while we're in here, we'll throw a new one in there. So hang tight and we're going to jump right into it. So first things first, you got to undo these clips. And it's pretty straightforward. You just press on these metal tangs and then work the clip and it pops right out. Sometimes it's a little tricky, but that is the way you do it. Now, getting these clips out is a little more cumbersome. And it's pretty easy to break them since the fuel rail is plastic. Cut some zip ties. And there you go. Now, doing the injector clips, there's really not a glorious or quick way to do it. I found the best was just to take your time, grab a screwdriver from both ends, and just try to wiggle it up. But definitely take your time, so hopefully don't break these clips and there you go once it releases then it's pretty easy and the injector is just held in by the o-ring now so just gently try to work that guy out there you go and then so far the o-rings have been getting stuck in here so just grab you a little pick and carefully work that out too up next we have the fuel pressure regulator, which we have a brand new AC Delco one. And there was no signs that this one was bad or well, anything wrong with it, but we figured while we're in here, might as well just take care of it. So it looks like there's a snap ring in here. Alright, well I guess that's one thing to watch out for. This thing might not come apart in one piece. So we got this O-ring all the way down in there, as well as the filter. Before we throw it all together, we're just gonna do a little touch of grease on the O-rings, just to make sure everything goes together real nice. And then I guess we just pop the new guy in. grab the snap ring and this other one that was included is just a clip for a different type of installation uh, they use these fuel pressure regulators on a bunch of different vehicles so for us we're using the snap ring and there you have it pull that vacuum line off and we'll just throw it on here so we don't forget about it now we could throw in some injectors I'd say before we get into installing the new fuel injectors, I want to take a look at the old ones. And you can see here, 
Here's your part number, 17109596, which from a Google search tells me these are 19 pounds per hour. That is definitely not enough fuel for a 454, let alone one that's supercharged. So we'll be replacing it with these Holly fuel injectors that are 36 pounds per hour. Here it is if you're interested in grabbing these fuel injectors for your truck. And what's cool about these is they are the same exact body pretty much, which means these clips are going to go right on. So it looks like we're going to have a direct replacement fuel injector that's going to finally have adequate fuel for this truck. And another tip I suggest you do is line up all of your fuel injectors and make sure you have an O-ring on the top and on the bottom because it could get stuck in either the fuel rail as you saw or in the intake plenum and you really don't want that because you don't want an O-ring to fall inside or to double O-ring when you install it because then you pretty much guarantee a fuel leak. Just put a little bit of the grease on this guy and let's start popping it together. Grab one of these clips And just like that, you've got new fuel injectors. And now that we got the fuel injectors all taken care of, we could grab our replacement harness from the Terminator X Max kit and get all these injectors plugged in. You've got cylinder one here, just like that. And there you have it, the Holly injectors went in with no modification, the clips just went right back on, and the Terminator X harness fits perfectly. I think it's quite the upgrade from this ratty old thing, and we're one step closer to getting this truck running. Here's a little before of the engine bay before we start the greasing and cleaning. And after all that time degreasing, here we are. That firewall really impresses me. I didn't expect it to get back to being as white as it is now. The wheel wells, everything cleaned up pretty well. This was where the real mess was. Over here, all the hydro boost was leaking. So that was a disaster. And the engine itself, that was just covered in oil. And now you can even see the timing cover. And surprise to me, someone put a fluid damper on this thing. So whoever the original owner was, they definitely threw money at this truck. That being said, let me know what you think. I'm pretty happy with how it came out, and I don't think it needs to be painted, especially for what we're going to be using the truck for. But here is the wire harness I was talking about. This is controlling everything in the engine bay, the air conditioning, the engine obviously, the transmission, and we're gonna have a lot to go through here and uh, skimp it down so it's getting the engine controlled by the Holly, but everything else still controlled by the vehicle VCM. So step one, I think I'm just gonna pull all these looms off, start going through the tape and just exposing what we gotta work with and then start deep pinning from there. After a couple hours of stripping down the harness, we've got all the wires bare. So the next step is going to be taking these connectors apart and depinning each one of the main connectors that went to the VCM. So we're probably going to have a good half of this harness go away. So it's really going to strip it down to a lot less than what it has right now because the Holly is going to be taking over all the engine management, obviously. Since this thing isn't controlling anything with the engine anymore and a couple other features, we can afford to get rid of a lot that's going on here. All right, I have the harness swapped around to where it's a little easier for you guys to see it. 
And first things first is going to be popping off these colored caps on uh, these connectors. So it's pretty easy and I would really recommend just doing one at a time so you don't get things confused and get a little ahead of yourself. So there's just two little tabs here. You can see that little white guy. Just grab a screwdriver or pick and there you go. Pop both sides off. And then the connector has these black tabs and just carefully pop those guys and just carefully open it up. You can see before this is the wire that was tapped into the Whipple system. So that's why that's already cut. And then we got our manual here that Spencer wrote for us so we know what we're actually working with. All right, here's the red. So remember, green means we keep it, blue means not used by the holly, so it means we could remove it, and red means not used by the factory. So let's just double check that. So 32, which means 17 and 18 are not used, which is correct. There's no pins in those two guys. So what I'm going to do is start depending these guys and I want to label each wire by the number it is. So if there's ever an issue, we can go back and put back what we took out. So we're going to start from 17, 18, 19. That means we take it out. There we go. So we're doing the red connector. So I'll do red. 19. I only have a hell of a lot more to go. And now that all that deep pinning is done, we have a pretty thinned out harness with things mostly labeled, so I think I know where everything needs to go. But I'd like to throw it back in the truck just really quick and make sure I actually know where everything's going before I do the final loom. But I really don't think this went too bad. Following the instructions that Spencer made, made this a heck of a lot easier. And without that, I definitely would have been lost. So I really suggest you guys, if you're taking on a project like this, make sure you check the factory service manual. It's gonna tell you everything you really need to know on how these harnesses work. But we're also putting together this manual that we plan on sharing with you guys. So if you're doing something similar to us, That'll help you out a ton. All right, so now that we have the harness all stripped and depinned and looking pretty much how we want it to be, I wanted to make sure before I loom it, all the wires are going where they need to be. So I did my best to keep it as organized as possible, but it's kind of tricky when you're doing all this wiring and making sure like wires are going over here they're supposed to or over here because you don't want a sensor being over here when it needs to be all the way on this side and it's pretty easy to get a little confused. So I've just laid everything into the engine bay and made it roughly where I need it to be. So as I go through and start to actually loom everything, I know it's gonna be where it needs to. So I have like the light up there, the body wiring that goes through the firewall. We're gonna keep that going through the firewall like factory. But I think we're gonna cut out this bulkhead and make room for also the holly wiring to come through that same spot and I think it'll just be pretty nice and clean. We have the fuel injector harness in the middle but that's for the Terminator X Max and we have like the oil pressure wiring, some air conditioning wiring, just a lot of stuff going on just like these grounds that I made a little bit too long and I'll cut them down once we do the final install. But now that all this is in I'm pretty confident with how I placed everything and now I will get to doing the final loom and cutting out that bulkhead. All right, and now that we have this harness back on the bench again, I'm gonna go through and cut each wire off of this bulkhead and then just reconnect it going wire to wire since they are color coded, obviously. That'll just bypass this whole unit and we'll have a lot more space to fit the holly wiring through the firewall. And here we are. This is pretty much the final step, in my opinion, before the final looming. I just went through, found all these little like sub harnesses or whatever you want to call them and taped accordingly. 
so that when I go through and do the actual loom, I could keep everything nice and split and the harness is just gonna look even better than it did from the factory. And just like that, we have the harness all loomed up from that mess of wire to this nicely organized, ready to install harness. I went with a DEI Easy Loom, uh, which is a split loom, and there's all these different part numbers if you're interested in getting something similar. And I used a variety of most of those sizes listed there. And I think it came out pretty great. This stuff seems durable and um, it should help keep this harness looking good and protected for plenty of miles to come. I'm pretty happy with it. I've never done a harness of this size before, so this was definitely a learning experience. But I think it came out great and I'm looking forward to seeing how it looks in the truck and get this thing running. Well, that's going to wrap up this week's video. We made a ton of progress on wiring, but we still have a ton to go. Soon we'll be installing this harness getting the Terminator X Max wiring into the truck, and hopefully we could have this thing running soon. So stay tuned for next week's updates. And if you want to chat, don't forget we just started up our new Discord group. So check the link down below. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you soon.